Buddy Lemon here again, and we've got a great showcase lined up for you today. Theo Ewing is going to demonstrate how to perform daily inspections on your Sentinel 880 series projectors. Theo is QSA Global's leading authority in daily inspections and our senior sales and service engineer. During Theo's demonstration, please send your questions through the live chat feature, and we'll answer them during the Q&A session following the showcase. I'd like to welcome you to the first ever ASNT annual virtual conference which QSA Global Incorporated is participating in. My name is Theo Ewing. I'm the Senior Sales and Service Engineer working here out of the Baton Rouge, Louisiana Service Center. Prior to this event, a poll was taken with a number of our customers to decide what would be helpful to you as a customer and what we should speak about. Well, it's been decided that I'll give you a little bit today about the proper survey techniques, the visual inspection of your projectors. We're going to talk about the proper daily inspection techniques for your controls, your guide tubes, and last of all, how to properly execute a misconnect test, which is mating up between your controls and your projector to look for different wire components to see if it's a go, no go situation. Okay, I would like to talk to you about the proper survey techniques for a projector that you just received, be it coming in through your transport, uh, FedEx, or what have you, or maybe just coming off the, uh, the rig onto a job site. You always got to perform an initial survey prior to start of work. So I have a tracer code, T4, 2 meter here. And what I want to check for on all sides is that the projector is less than 200 MR per hour on the surface. Now I check the rear side, the front side, all around the circumference. I even go so far just to put the projector on its side and check the bottom. The other key point you want to check is at a distance of one meter from the projector that it's less than 10 MR. a distance of three feet away, you can clearly see the magenta on the yellow background. Uh, these nameplates, we do offer these nameplates. If you ever need to change them out, just call us up, give us a serial number, we'll stamp the serial number on, and then you can put this nameplate on yourself, change it out. Four eighth inch stainless steel rivets, just pop rivet it on. So from an inspection standpoint, my label's in good shape. The other labels I'll look for is the source tag. It has to be in place. And 
The third thing is most people put their personal company ID tag in the front side somewhere around this lip, but they could put it anywhere, make sure the company ID is legible and in place. Next, uh, unlock the camera, operate the selector ring, remove the cover, and I do a visual inspection of my source connector right here. I don't want to see any flaring or damage to it right there. I have what's called a no-go gauge, something unique to QSA Global. I'll remove it, and with this no-go gauge, I can check the female gap right here. I can make a connection with my drive cable and check the gap between the drive cable and the female connector. Plus, there's two more points on the controls, the drive cable I can also check with it. Should these gaps pass through here, then it is a no-go situation. It's designed for it not to fit. And that means there is not enough wear that you need to take it out of service. So I've made checks right here. I have a lock plunger that is operating freely. My selector ring is working very well and I have the cover. Then I come around to the front side and I check my little nut right here. Now, right now I have a leak test nut placed inside here uh, just to make sure that the pins are working fine. Now I visually look over the camera, make sure that nobody has drilled holes or there's any excessive wear that may have come through into the body of the camera. Now one point I want to note is that the body of the camera is your Type B device. This is what your certificate of compliance and competent authority is based on. The body of the camera, there cannot be any excessive damage or holes or anything that would change the certificate of compliance. And that completes a quick check of the projector. Now we're going to rotate the camera to the front side of the projector and we're going to check the port collar. You got good spring tension. There's a spring that sits on the shaft right here. You want good spring tension. You rotate it over. And at this point, it's a good time to check your bayonet, a cable adapter. You want nice, good, smooth edges, or I should say squared off edges around the bayonets, because over time they will round off and get too small in your overall diameter. So make sure it's good square edges. You got a good clear opening. Your threads are in good shape. They're one inch 18 threads. Make the connection right here and then open your port cover. And you can feel the tension right here. You know you got a good connection. So at that point, you know your port cover is in good shape. Something else I like to do is grab the rear and the front and shake it. It tells me that my four main screws holding your rear and front plate on are solid. They're all the way screwed in. If you're inspecting your projector and you see that holes have been drilled or there's wire spots in the body of the camera, it's out of compliance with the certificate. But point being made that the body of the camera is a certificate compliance, not the jacket itself right here. Let's talk about the guide tubes, the daily inspection on the guide tubes. At QSA Global, we offer two types of guide tubes. We have the one with the yellow vinyl uh, coating on the outside. We tend to use it in warmer environments. But however, if you're in a cold environment, minus 20 to minus 40 degrees, or what have you, we have this special material coated on the guide tube, and it works very well in cold environments. We call it like stream guide tube. For daily inspection, you're going to do the same depending on what type of tube you have. You want to stretch them out and visually look at the tube, make sure there's no thermal damage, cuts, or heavy abrasions on here. 
uh, the cuts that concern us are ones that are going to be next to your crimp on connectors. Your crimp on connectors are crimped onto the exterior material, and that's what's gripping it. But sometimes from the flexing back and forth, you can get breakage and get cuts next to it. Well, if this happens too near to the crimp, the whole section may pull off. So I would pull something like this out of service. I also like to flex the tube. This inside material right here is a rally wrap conduit metal tube inside here. And you can get separations. And if it's too separated, you're going to have a very flexible tube. You may want to do a boroscope inspection inside or maybe have us send it to QSA, let us inspect it to make sure that you don't have separations in those coils. Another thing with a cut, you can have cuts towards the center of the material. It's not going to affect anything. What I would recommend is get some yellow vinyl, electrical tape, wrap it up. It stops the environmental ingress of mud, water, other foreign materials from traveling between the inside metal tube and the yellow vinyl. So wrap it up with a vinyl tape. On the connection side, I want to make sure that I got good bayonets. They're nice and clean, good edges, swivels good. But if you did have a guide tube, such as this one right here, that has a 1 inch 18 fitting, make sure your threads, your 1 inch 18 threads are clean and not uh, damaged at all. This material right here is a soft material. It's very easy if it's damaged. You can get a 1 inch 18 thread chaser and just chase those threads to clean them up. So, inspect the vinyl for damage. Make sure your crimps are good on both ends. Check your connector. It's good. Now, let's talk about the source tip. This is a fixed tip tube right here. Good crimp. Good point right here. Notice this point. It's very prominent. Good square edges. Uh, here is a tip that was sent in uh, that we had to cut off and put a new tip on this guide tube. The edges are completely smooth and rounded off. You don't have this prominent point. This one has worn to the point where it actually blew the end out of it. And it doesn't cap over like a lid. It just totally comes off. Now it will block the source from coming out. But if you don't catch it in your daily inspections, and you crank it a number of times, that source will eventually protrude through, and now you have a retrieval situation. So look for those nice, clean edges right there. And make sure that's fine. So daily inspection of your guide tubes is very important because we have so many retrievals related to damaged guide tubes. Another thing that you can do is and this is not part of your daily inspection, but it is recommended that in the cover you have what's called a jumper connector. This little connector is the same diameter as a source assembly. If you take a little short piece of drive cable, this gives it some added weight. Make the connection and then just pass it through the tubes. And it tells you that there's no prints or anything to block the travel of the source. I also want to mention that on the source tips, uh, we do see a problem with screw-on collimators uh, indenting the tip. This is a very thin wall aluminum material. And with these collimators, if you do not loosen the screw when you turn it, it will round out and place a groove around the tip and cause an indention. If you can feel this indention, it's time to take it out of service. 
So check these tips and make sure that you did, do not have a heavy indention. I'd like to show you now the inspection of the controls. Well, what you want to do is take your controls, what I like to do, is stretch them completely out. Then I do what's called a freedom of movement, where I'll just maybe a quarter or a half turn, just move it. It tells me if the drive cable is uh, restricted in any manner. It could be a crimp or something in the conduit material that may be blocking it. So I do a quick freedom of movement. The next thing I do is an inspection of the pistol grip. I look at the label, make sure everything is legible. You're required per ANC in 432 to legibly have on here retract and expose the direction of movement as required. You want to make sure that the handle is not loose, the nut, the bolt is in, in place, nice and tight. Your six screws on this 882 are all in place. Now next, I'll look down my conduits and I'm looking for cuts burns, any damage to the conduit material. And if I see a cut or burn, I um, have to evaluate, is it enough damage to pull it from service? And if it's not, I may wrap it with some vinyl tape to block the ingress of the environment from getting inside. Then I'll look behind my connector fittings. I don't see any breakage in the vinyl material. My crimps are good, no splitting, nothing unusual. They're completely snug and threaded in place. Then I come around to my 661 safety connector, which goes to the rear of the projector. I have a, what I call a dust cover in place. I make sure I have that. My connectors are good. Screws are all tight. No problems there. I'll remove the dust cover at this point. Then I'll look at my collar. My pins are nice and square. They're not completely rounded off or any damage at all right there. Then I'll drop it down and we have the 661 flappers. The pins holding them in place are in the proper position and not backing out. Uh, they made up well. No problems there. Next, uh, I'd like to inspect about 12 inches of the drive cable. You know how it is when you roll up your controls. There's times where the cover falls off and you always got that few inches of drive cable hanging out there. It's picking up the environment. It could be mud, water, it could be in your dark room, picking up chemicals. So it's going to damage that portion. So I crank out about 12 inches and I do a visual inspection of your drive cable. The first thing I'm looking for is how clean it is. And this one's pretty clean. I look for rust. I do what's called a wag test where I bounce it around. I don't see any memory. If it was rusted and I bend it, it would not come true again. I, when I touch it, I got a light coating of grease in place. I check my outer windings. They're nice and round, evenly spaced. The diameter of this cable is 0.185 inches, the OD of the outer windings. If you get flat tops coming in place here, this be, could be because maybe the drive cable is bent and it's wearing against your 661. It would flatten out these outer windings. If they get below, 0.183, which is not much tolerance, we have to clip it and put a new connector in place. We take it out of service. So I've checked for grease, my outer windings, flexibility, rust. Then I come to my drive cable connector. This is a 550 drive cable connector. I want to make sure that it's sitting straight on the drive cable. Our rule of thumb is if it's more than 15 degrees out of place, we have to remove it from service. Sometimes you get breakage back here or extreme rust and you start seeing these signs. Notice for flexibility behind it. And if you see it, you may want to take it out of service. Check the crimp 
on the 550 connector. Look at your ball and your shank on here. Make sure they're straight, there's no damage. And using the go, no go gauge, the two points you can check also is the diameter of the ball and the shank right here. And check and make sure it's in good shape. So definitely check your drive cables. This is part of your daily inspection. So to summarize, I looked at my pistol grip assembly. I have a good label. It's legible. My handle screws are tight. All my connectors, connections are tight. No excessive cuts or burns in the conduits. I have freedom of movement. I've checked my 661 safety connector. My pins are in place. Everything looks very good. No, no excessive wear. And I checked my drive cable. Now it's very important to do a misconnect. Anytime you take a set of controls and match it with a projector, do a quick misconnect test. It only takes about 30 seconds to do it. What you're looking for is if you have shared excessive wear between your controls, these fittings right here on the front, and the projector, you may get to a point where you can make the connection of the 661 to the body of the camera without hooking up your drive table to your source. So quick test, just bump the collar up Try to make the connection without connecting to the source assembly and push and see if you can turn the selector ring. Now, if you did have a set of controls that are completely worn or projected with enough wear in it, you would be able to make that connection and turn your selector. But understand, you do not have the connection between your drive cable and your source. So do not turn past the lock position. Because if you went past the lock position, now you no longer have control of your source assembly. So just be warned of that. So the quick test is bump it up to the projector and see if you can turn your selector ring. Notice how much gap you have right here. This is a brand new set of controls, a brand new projector. So it's a lot of tolerance there. But if you can picture how many times this drive cable that goes out and in. It's reducing the length of your connector. These pins on the collar will wear over time, reducing the distance when it's made it up. And inside the selector for the posi lock assembly, you can get wear inside these pin holes. And also, this dimple area where this rubs against here will wear on the retainer plate. So if it wears enough between your controls and your retainer, you may fail the misconnect test. And you want to be aware of it and check for it. Because otherwise, if you crank the source out without con connecting your drive cable to your source, you will not be able to bring the source in, and it's a retrieval situation. With each of our radiography projectors, iridium, cobalt, selenium, all the other projectors, we offer the operation and maintenance manual with each one. In this manual, it covers all the techniques and topics that you will need. Uh, inspection and maintenance, as we discussed, are in this manual. Please use it uh, for your reference. If you have any questions, give us a call here at the service center or send us an email. We'll be happy to respond to you, uh, to your questions. I want to thank you for your time, for watching these videos. And uh, here at QSA Global, we love to support our customers.